What's up guys? Just before we begin this video, I'd like to remind you that I'm currently working on a benchmark video where I'm going to be comparing my old FX8350 to an i5-2400 in PUBG that is going to be uploaded very soon with a few more interesting videos coming up, so be sure to turn on the notifications so you won't miss it. Today we're going to be talking about how to choose a motherboard. I have made a video on that subject a couple of years ago, which has been getting quite a bit of attention lately. And considering it got outdated, I decided to make a fresh guide for current as well as upcoming processors. It doesn't matter whether you're building an AMD or Intel system, using 5 year old components, or even watching this video in 2020, this guide is going to be relevant for most cases and at least for a few years. Now, there are great videos explaining this topic, although personally I feel like some of them are just way too long. And just like any other video of mine, I'll try to make it as short and simple as possible. So without wasting any more time, Let's get right into it. First thing you need to do before choosing a motherboard is picking yourself a CPU, graphics card, RAM and storage, after which you can move on to choosing yourself a motherboard depending on your main components. In case you haven't decided on which parts to choose yet, I have left a couple of guides which you can watch in the card at the top right corner. Decide which chipset suits you the most so you don't buy a motherboard that has features you're never going to use. Each motherboard chipset has different features such as overclockability, multiple GPU support, more USB ports, etc. So be sure to do some research and pick a motherboard that will suit your needs. When it comes to overclockability, it does not end with the motherboard. Your CPU has to be capable of doing that as well, so be sure to double check before making any final decisions. If you chose a Ryzen processor, there is no need to worry about that, as all Ryzen CPUs are unlocked. In case you're wondering, motherboard chipsets don't impact gaming performance whether you're getting an entry-level or enthusiast one, so there is no need to spend more in hopes of reaching higher frames. The most important thing is to make sure your motherboard socket supports your processor. So if you're getting a desktop Ryzen CPU which has an AIM4 socket, then you need to look for an AIM4 motherboard, which by the way is going to be supported until 2020, so you don't need to worry about changing your motherboard anytime soon. On the Intel side, it's a similar story. If you're getting a Coffee Lake processor such as the i7-8700K which has an LGLN51 socket, then you need an LGLN51 motherboard. But there is one more thing you need to be aware of. Unfortunately, not all LGLN51 motherboards are compatible with all of the LGLN51 processors. And the only way to not mess that up is choose the right chipset. Basically, it works like this. 6th gen, 7th gen, and 8th gen CPUs, all of which have an LGLN51 socket, are compatible with chipsets that were released alongside those processors, which means an i7 6700K will work on a Z170 chipset motherboard, i7 7700K is going to work on a Z270, and the 8700K on a Z370 chipset. And even though all of them have the same sockets, they're unfortunately not backwards compatible. Either way, be sure to check the list of supported processors on your motherboard manufacturer's website. If you're thinking of using more than two GPUs, a sound card, or anything else that connects to the PCIe lane, then make sure your motherboard has enough PCIe slots. Your processor also depends on the amount of PCIe lanes that can be used on your motherboard, so be sure to check the maximum supported amount of lanes your CPU can handle. Find out whether your motherboard has enough DIMM slots for your RAM and don't forget to also check the maximum supported amount of RAM and its latency in the specs. In case you're building an old system, be sure to double check whether your motherboard supports DDR3 or DDR4 RAM. Now you also probably heard about dual channel or quad channel memory support. Basically it works like this. If a motherboard has dual channel support, it means that it will work the best with only two sticks of RAM connected to the motherboard. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't use four sticks to increase your capacity. It's pretty much the same thing with quad channel memory. It is preferred to use four sticks of RAM for the best performance, but again, you should be able to use all eight memory slots if necessary. Just be sure to use the same sticks when doing so, as you might encounter stability issues when pairing different RAM modules. Be sure your motherboard has enough SATA ports for all your hard drives, SSDs, and DVD drives. If you're also thinking of buying an M.2 or NVMe SSD, then make sure your motherboard supports them as well. Don't forget to check if case of your choice supports the form factor of your motherboard. First, you might want to choose the motherboard and then the case depending on how big your motherboard is. 
And of course, be sure to get a motherboard that will complement the color scheme of your case, as well as your other peripherals. And that's pretty much it. These are the main things to look for and as long as you follow provided steps, you won't have any issues choosing the right motherboard. By the way, I have also left a few links for some of the best motherboards for Ryzen as well as Coffee Lake in the description if you're interested. Alright, that's going to be it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, definitely be sure to leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and turn on the notifications for upcoming content, and I'll see you in the next video.